Space probe spy habitable zone to the closest star to Earth. The potential candidate can be a mirage or a warm Neptune. In any case, it signifies the beginning of an astronomical revolution. Astronomers may have seen a light from a planet in a habitable orbit around another star for the first time ever. What's this? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at how this space probe found a habitable zone to the closest star near the Earth. Make sure to stick to the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. The possible planet candidate is still a nameless, unconfirmed blob of pixels on a computer screen, a signal emerging from a sea of background noise. If authenticated, the discovery would not be particularly noteworthy in most ways. It would be a warm Neptune, which is a world that is thought to be five to seven times as massive as Earth, and which galactic census takers like NASA's Kepler and transiting exoplanet survey satellite missions have shown to be widespread throughout the Milky Way. Despite being shrouded in gas and devoid of any surface to stand on, its proximity from its star would place it in the so-called habitable zone, where liquid water could exist. Because of the associated glare, no other planet has been directly observed in this starlight-drenched region around any other star, and its celestial coordinates would be straight out of astronomers' wildest dreams. It would orbit a near twin of the Sun called Alpha Centauri A, which is also a member of a triple star system that is the closest to our own at just shy of 4.5 light-years away. The system's other members, a slightly smaller sun-like star called Alpha Centauri b and the diminutive red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, are also high-priority focus for astronomers, who have previously indirectly identified the existence of at least two worlds around Proxima, including one that is likely rocky and within that star's habitable zone. Either you're looking for real estate across town or near another star, location is everything. The Centauri system is so near that scientists studying the atmospheres and surfaces of any worlds that exist there, particularly in search of possible signs of life, have a unique front row seat. And astronomers have long known that planets are similar to household pests and that where one is seen, others are likely to be found. As a result, as tentative as they may be, the rapidly growing crop of Centauri worlds hints at untold breakthroughs yet to be made, which could profoundly alter our understanding of our place in the universe. The findings were published in the journal Nature Communications in February 2021. They come from Breakthrough Watch, an international consortium of planet hunters, via the inaugural science run of NEAR, New Earths in the Alpha Sin region, a one-of-a-kind direct imaging instrument that operates on the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope in Chile. Breakthrough Initiatives is the brainchild of Silicon Valley billionaire Yuri Milner, who also finances similar projects to hunt the cosmos for signs of alien civilizations and to send pint-sized interstellar spacecrafts to the Alpha Centauri system. There is no better place in the sky to try to directly image small, potentially habitable planets, says study co-author and Breakthrough Initiative's chief engineer, Pete Klupar. In some ways, this was low-hanging fruit. For only $3 million, we were able to build an instrument to take advantage of ESO's billions of dollars invested in its telescopes with our international partners. But it's also like looking for a needle in a haystack, which explains why no one has done it before. The candidate's enticing signal was discovered after 100 hours of observations on the VLT over 10 nights in the spring of 2019. As the Breakthrough Watch team members sifted through their observations in June of that year, they realized they may have discovered something. The study's lead author, Kevin Wagner, a postdoctoral Sagan Fellow at the University of Arizona, first noticed the telltale evidence of a planet-like blip cresting far above Near's instrumental noise. While on vacation with his family in Lake Jocassi, South Carolina, he was working remotely on a batch of data when the blip appeared. By measuring its brightness and comparing it to limits on planet masses and sizes determined in earlier studies by other teams, the Breakthrough Watch team calculated that if the blip were a planet, it would most likely be between Neptune and Saturn in size. Even if the discovery turned out to be false, he and his colleagues were confident the discovery was worthwhile publishing before November. Peer-reviewed claims of a small planet around Alpha Centauri b in 2012 vanished a few years later, only to be revealed to be the result of stellar noise. This would not be the first time our neighboring star system has deceived researchers. 
the feeble signal, which is basically a thermal wisp of infrared photons, that is of heat, and which appears to come from a source on the periphery of the Alpha Centauri Ace habitable zone, is susceptible to a wide range of different hypotheses. A sun-like star radiates billions of times brighter than a small solid planet in visible light. This contrast ratio, however, is only measured in millions because the star is fainter and the planet is brighter in infrared. For many years, only hot massive planets orbiting far from their stars could be directly imaged due to the difficulties of even obtaining this more basic measurement, that is before NEAR was constructed. It is a mid-infrared coronagraph, a specialized tool made to obstruct the majority of a star's thermal emission at a constrained wavelength of 10 microns. It operates by switching its focus between Alpha Centauri A and B every tenth of a second using measurements of each star to help calibrate those of the other. It is enhanced by adaptive optics to adjust for the blurring turbulence of Earth's atmosphere. It gradually filters out starlight and stacks frames so that any planetary light can ultimately build up and be seen. Any ensuing blip, however, might actually be a background object in the distance, a cloud of dust warmed by starlight, an asteroid belt orbiting a star, or even the mistaken play of stray photons seeping from beamlines and spraying across delicate optics inside the instrument. The first possibility has already been ruled out by Wagner and his co-authors. No known background star or galaxy can account for the blip, but the others are still in the running to varying degrees. It should have been quite easy to determine whether the blip was a planet by simply trying to view it again after enough time has passed. If it is a planet, its orbital motion will have swept it to a new and very different position around its star. The blip's colors might then be roughly measured in later. Time-consuming experiments using NEAR to help rule out the dust cloud theory. But the COVID pandemic that followed forced the closure of astronomical observatories and almost everything else worldwide, so this was not to be, not yet at least. Deborah Fisher, a Yale University veteran planet hunter, said, The timing is such a shame. Although she is not associated with the study, her work with Lili Zhao, a former student, has set the tightest restrictions on the planets that might or might not exist in the Alpha Centauri system. According to Fisher, observing six months later would probably have nailed it if the object were in the habitable zone surrounding Alpha Centauri A. This orbits similar to that of Earth. Without that, there isn't a planet detection paper. Instead, it's an example of how NEAR can track Alpha Centauri in the mid-infrared. However, if this proves to be accurate, oh my gosh, it's massive. For the time being, NEAR is the only coronagraph on Earth that has a good chance of photographing the undiscovered worlds of Alpha Centauri, but there are already additional tools and resources ready to examine the system on their own. Both Fisher's highly accurate Express radial velocity spectrograph and its even more sophisticated Espresso European counterpart are already in use. By keeping an eye out for the periodic wobbles each world's orbital pulling causes on its host star, they may indirectly confirm the planet candidate and others and estimate their masses. And that ends our episode today. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts. And don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.